All right, as we get started, let's take a look at your homework uh, from yesterday. You had f of x is equal to negative a half sine of 2x. And several things that we see here, um, the first thing I always look at is what function are we looking at? Of course, it's sine, and that determines what basic shape we're using. Basic shape is defined by your five key points class. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I always start key points, okay? Number two, I always look at inversion and amplitude kind of at the same time. Because all we're going to do is take these key points and multiply by that. So my points are going to change now. Zero, zero, negative, negative a half. Zero, negative a half. Zero, zero. Right, so we're cutting them all in half, but we're also changing the sign, the SIG, out of each of those. So it should be zero, negative a half, zero, a half, zero. And then the next thing I'll look at is period change. Remember the period for typical sine and cosine is? 2 pi. 2 pi. Technically though, we said it's 2 pi over b, where this is b. So in this case, it's 2 pi over 2, two which pi. is just oh. pi. So the period here is pi, meaning the entire set of key points has to be done by the time we get to pi. So I'm going to start at 0, and I'm going to end at 0, but that's going to be at pi this time that I end. Halfway between the zeros is another? Zero. That's going to be a pi. Halfway in between the first two zeros, I should be at negative a half. Which, since it's two boxes to one, that's halfway go down a box. And then in between the last two zeros, I have my positive half. If the instructions say to graph a full period, then that's all I had to do. If it said to graph from zero to two pi, I could extend it out, the same thing again, and you would see a second full cycle, which is the other way to interpret the B, is this is how many full cycles between 0 and 2 pi. How many have this for your homework last night? Questions on this? <laughs> just quickly. I did it to uh, 2 pi. Oh, okay, you went to full 2 pi. Okay, so you did the negative half thing, but you forgot to change the period. Yeah. All right, let me give you another one. You can use the same graph grid from your homework. F of x is equal to the cosine of 2 thirds x. At your seats. You can use the same graph grid you used your homework, or you used for your homework. Try something, Jamie, if you don't mind. The stuff has been coming out really fuzzy. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to uh, record, so I'm going to try putting the camera in front of you instead of behind you and to see if being closer produces a clearer image on YouTube. And I may have to do this for classes until we're done graphing. doesn't work, I'm going to check it tonight after I've uploaded the video, and if it isn't clearer, then there's no point doing it, right? <laughs> but, because um, downstairs my videos come out clearer because the camera's closer, I think, um, is the difference. I thought it might be the camera, so I switched the cameras and it's still coming out a little fuzzy, so I think it's just because it's further away. And most of the time, crystal clear doesn't make as big a difference, but on a graph it will, so we'll see if this helps. Thinking of you, Chris, trying to take care of you. Favorite student status and all. Sorry, Ethan. <laughs> you work really hard, you can get it back. Chris works hard? He hardly works, it's the same thing. Just
we're going to look up this way. Did you find the period to be 3 pi? 3 pi. So I have 6 boxes to pi, 6 more to 2 pi, and it's going to take 6 more boxes, 18 total, to get to 3 pi. All right, at this point, I start at 1, that's going to be at the, at the, on the axis, and I end at 1, that's going to be at 3 pi. Halfway in between, which is 3 halves pi, is going to be my negative 1, and that's a total of 9 boxes. So at 4 and a half boxes is my 0, and then 4 and a half more boxes is the next 0. I didn't bother with all the other little things because that's just be really annoying to figure out where they end up. So I just tried to keep that basic shape we're used to seeing as smooth and nice as I could. And this is what I came up with. How many had something very similar? All right, questions from those who did not. Does it make sense? I forgot that the, I had three pi at that point, but I had forgotten to put the one on the one side and the other. And I just right, so I always take care of ends first. Once that's done, I go to the middle. And then I split the gaps with the last two, okay? And then again, if it, if it lends itself, you know, I may try to figure out the other key points as well. That's, it just gets really awkward because, you know, where is, you know, the next two points are thirds, right? So, like, is this, and I guess technically this and this is where my point nine should be right here. And my half, and it actually happened to work out great, but that's where my point, that's a lot of little details to keep track of. Um, I actually just missed that point, not by much. Uh, kind of came down a little less quickly than I should have. Should have dropped a little bit more and come in flatter. So I mean, but it's really close. Um, really close. Questions? So um, the zero was at four and a half boxes? That's four and a half because it's nine boxes to the, to the um, middle point. So it comes four and a half to the zero and then four and a half to the next zero. Right. And again, if you have those five key points right and you're careful to make a nice smooth curve, you know what it's supposed to look like now, you shouldn't need the point fives and point nines as much. Okay. Though, again, if, it's, if you have time on a quiz or test and you want to try to plot it out, like here you can see I missed a point 0.5. I hit the point 0.9 pretty much on, but I missed that point 0.5. Just missed that point 0.5. Pretty much hit the point 0.9 that time. So, you know, if I really wanted to be perfectly careful, whatever. Okay, questions? All right, next thing in your notes. There's a couple more things we're going to do to the sine curve. So as if we haven't butchered it enough by stretching it and flipping it and smushing it and all that stuff, we're going to shift it around all over the place. So the next thing in your notes, vertical translation. Vertical translation. Or as I like to call it because I'm lazy, vertical shift. Now that you've written translation, that's the evil teacher in me. Vertical translation, or I'm just going to say vertical shift. Here's what it's going to look like. You'll have your function of x, and of course we're familiar with a positive negative a times the sine of bx, right? Where this is whether or not you invert, there's your amplitude, this is your period change. If there is a number that is separate from everything, like this is all technically one term, right? If there is a number that is a separate term, that's your vertical shift. Now, you could see it at the end. Some texts will have the positive negative v at the end. We need to know this, that a positive shifts up and a negative shifts down, which is exactly what we would expect to happen. So if we have a plus number, we shift the graph up. If we have a negative number, we shift the graph down. Go ahead and set up another graph grid on your paper, if you would, please. And let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of functions that we can shift on the Cartesian plane. Let's take a look at a basic function of x equals 1 plus the sine of x. f of x equals 1 plus the sine of x. For starters, I always look at the basic shape in my key points, class. So 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. 
All right, it's the basic sine curve, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. Notice it's not inverted, is it? And the amplitude is an understood one right here, isn't it? So there's no stretch, there's no flip. The period has a one as its B value, so the period's still two pi. So everything's exactly the way I'd normally see it, right? Except there's this one out front. What that positive one is gonna do, it's gonna shift the whole graph up one unit. So here's what I recommend. Lightly draw at one, what we're gonna call an X prime axis. We're not going to put arrowheads on the ends of it or anything like that. And again, the x-axis has already been labeled, but just a lightly drawn line, we're going to call this the x prime axis. And we're going to base everything off of this line. This keeps us from having to do too much weird math, okay? I don't like math, right? I like easy, and math is not always easy. So if I look at this, you realize this is my new axis. This is zero, isn't it? And then 1, 0, negative 1, 0. I can even do my 0.5s and 0.9s if I wanted to, right? And I haven't had to do any math because by drawing this new axis, this new frame of reference. And I can't even see the point because my hand's in the way. But it's something like that. And that's the curve. And here's the whole curve has just been whoop, shifted up one. Same sign curve we're used to seeing, but bumped up. That's the power of the x prime axis. Now, the other option you could do, yes, is add one to everything, say one, two, one, zero, one, and, cross, and add one to all of your key points. But then you're like, okay, now what do I do with my point fives? So one point five and one point, that's just annoying, right? If you just do it with a new x axis, and again, this becomes in your mind zero and one and negative one relative to the prime axis, right? You don't actually renumber it, but I don't think you need to. I think you're smart enough to figure those things out yourself, right? Questions on that? All right, so we'll do another one. You can use the same graph grid. And let's do uh, f of x is equal to the cosine of x minus two. You could also say f of x equals negative two plus the cosine of x. Do you see that these are exactly the same thing? In one case, the negative two is at the end. In one case, the negative two is at the beginning. But either way, it is a separate term. Does that make sense? This is the way I will typically present it. However, on ACT, SAT testing, they may pitch it to you this way. So I want you to see it both ways. College texts may have it that way as well, okay? Just depends. But I want you to see it both ways, but this is the way we'll do it in this class. We'll have the, the plus minus v at the beginning. All right, so notice everything's normal about the cosine, right? So my key points are? One, zero, negative one, zero, one. Good, Quentin. And there's no flip, there's no stretch, there's no period change. The only change is a vertical shift. We're going down two. Down two. So I'm gonna go down two, I'm gonna widely put an x prime axis. And we're going to do our normal cosine curve, but we're going to refer to that point as if it's our axis. So I normally start relative to here, this would be 1. Does that make sense? And then this would be 0. Three boxes later, this would be negative 1 relative to my x prime axis, 0 and 1. And again, if I want to do the point 9s and the point 5s, I could. And connect with a smooth, continuous curve. And there's my cosine curve, just like it's always been. It just went down into the basement. Really far into the basement. Questions on that? Easy enough? Mm -hmm. I think this mathematically is easier than any of the other changes we've made. Okay? Um, super straightforward. Any, what? Is there any more changes? There's have? one more change we have to get to. You can probably guess what it is. If this is vertical shift, horizontal. yeah, horizontal shifts to come. Uh, but vertical shift is perhaps one of the easiest concepts we'll talk about. Look in your textbooks, if you would, at page 88. Page 88. Uh, page 88. 
Number 13, what is the vertical translation or the vertical shift, class? One. Up one. So let's do the up or down with it. Number 14? Up three. Up three. Number 15? Down seven. Down seven. Number 16, Quentin? Down two. Down two. Number 17, Jamie? Um, up three. Up three. Number 18, Ethan? Down two. Down two. Number 19, Quentin? Zero. Zero. You don't shift at all. Good catch. Good job. How about number 20, Jamie? Um, zero. No shift there as well because that's not a separate term. It's being multiplied. 21 would be a little obnoxious to graph, I guess, Ethan. And uh, down a uh, third. And I say that would be obnoxious, but think about it, right? A third of the way, if you just put a new x prime axis whoop, through here, you go up 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. Uh, I got off of my counting. There we go. 0, or negative 1, 0, and 1. It's actually not that hard to base off of the x prime axis, right? So you can still get your fairly decent cosine curve there, right? Down a third. So with the translated axis, it's not a whole bunch of fractions you're dealing with. You just have to go relative to where the axis was drawn. Um, let's see here. Where we leave off? Oh, number 22, uh, Quentin. Up one, 23, Jamie. Up three. Up three, and 24, Ethan. Uh, no. no shift vertically. Questions on that? Easy enough? Now, the thing is, of course, you know how this is going to go, right? We're not just going to have vertical shift as the only change, right? In fact, we could shift and change a whole lot of things all at once, right? So, for instance, if I had f of x is equal to negative 1, negative 3, sine of x, there's actually several changes going on. But what I'll always do first is I'll start with my key points, class. Zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. Then I'll always look at the amplitude and inversion. Is there any amplitude change? Yeah, yeah. Three, and inversion, yeah. yes, with the negative. So what are my new key points? Zero, negative three, zero, zero. Is there any period change? No. No, so period is still two pi. Okay, so that's nice. And then there's one more change. But I don't need to do any messing with the numbers for that. I'm just going to draw a new x prime axis. So set up the new graph grid. strategy tip. When you set it up, watch. I'm going to be shifting everything down, correct? And I'm going to be doing quite a bit of stretch. So watch. I'm going to give myself more room below than above. So I'm going to set my axis a little higher instead of right down the middle. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter, right? You just do really big sections above and below. But I'm going to give myself more room below than I do above because I'm going to need more room below because I'm shifting it down. And that's how you can, you know, play the system, I guess, when you're setting up your own axes. Also, I don't have quite as much space on my graph grid as you do on a sheet of graph paper, so I have to be a little bit creative, I guess. So that creativity may not be as necessary in your case. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is draw a new x prime axis at negative 1. And I wouldn't draw it very dark. Don't put arrowheads because it's not a real axis. It's just a line there for reference. And if you label it x prime, that makes it clear, you know, this is just a reference axis. Now, relative to this line, I'm not going off real 0, negative 3, 0, 3, 0, but relative to this line, I'm going to start at... Zero on the line, basically. Coming over to pi over 2, I'm going to go up to 3. 1, 2, 3. It's really at 2, but it's relative to the translated axis. It's at 3. Then back to the adjusted 0, down 3. It's really at negative 4, but you know, down 3, and then back to 0. And if you wanted to, you could even triple amplitude 3, the point 5s, right? So if I triple a point 5, that's 1 and a half, which is 3 boxes instead of 1. 
I can come down three boxes. And for stretched graphs like this, that may be helpful. I can triple the 0.86 to get like 2.7-ish. And it was like, well, oh, negative three. <laughs> I went up instead of down. I wrote the key points, right? And then I went up out of habit. All right, so my whole thing is upside down. I got to start. That's annoying. Chris is screaming at the computer. Mr. Nijaski, flip it, flip it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear you, Chris, until just now. Delayed, delayed sound. Okay, so here we're going to come down to negative three. Here we're going to go up positive three. Yes. So here's the halves. Let's try this one instead. And something like that. All right, is that what we had? <laughs> I had flipped. I didn't hang it. You were following me and didn't flip it. I'm yeah. a terrible example. So I, I was like, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, okay. And this is important. a great example of why it's important to do well, because people are always watching. All right, um, we got it now. Don't forget to flip. We even said we were going to flip, and then I turned around and didn't look at the points. All right, um, questions on how we could do multiple changes at once. Did we see how the shift just kind of jives with everything else? Now, the next one's going to be a little bit more challenging. That's your horizontal translation. That's if you want to sound smart, or if you want to sound like me, you say horizontal shift. Horizontal translation or horizontal shift. All right, here is the final thing we're going to do. So this is where everything kind of culminates, all right? So f of x equals, we've already seen vertical shift. We've already seen inversion. We've seen amplitude. We've seen basic function, sine or cosine. We've seen period change coupled with the x, which is your horizontal axis, is where we're going to put our horizontal shift. x minus plus h. I'm using a for amplitude. I'm using v for vertical shift. I'm using h for horizontal shift. Now, the b, I don't know, just because the book uses that one. But I'm going to use h for horizontal shift. But notice the minus plus. This is because a negative actually shifts forward and a positive shifts backward. So because it's backward thinking, we think of positive this way, negative this way, it's inverse of what we think. So I'm going to have you write it inverse of what we say, so you'll remember, go the other direction. Does that make sense? So I'm going to put a minus plus h just to, as a little memory tool to help us remember, go the opposite of what you would normally think. So uh, for instance, if I had f of x equals the sine of x minus pi, I'm going to shift the normal sine curve, right? There's no vertical shift, no inversion, no amplitude, no period change. I'm going to shift the whole thing forward pi. So that, just a quick sketch here, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 3 pi, whatever, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay. I'm going to shift everything forward pi. So what I'll do is I'll lightly draw an f of x prime axis, like we drew the next prime axis, and I start the normal sine curve. I start at 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And there's my basic sine curve, but the whole thing just shifted forward. Now, 
technically, remember, it goes to infinity, right? So one might argue that we would have that too, correct? But again, this just shifted forward pi. And again, can keep going and going both directions, really. Does that make sense on the shift? Okay, so on your paper now, go ahead and set up a new graph grid. And let's do one of these together. Let's do f of x equals the sine of the quantity x plus pi over 3. f of x equals the sine of the quantity x plus pi over 3. Again, as you look at the function, there's only one change, right? I haven't messed with anything except horizontal. horizontal shift. Which direction should we shift the sine curve? Backward how far? Pi over 3. And it's like, wait a second, pi over 3? Well, what would that be in degrees? That's basically 60 degrees, right? And every box is how many degrees? 30. So how many boxes? 30. So we're going to shift everything backward two boxes. Make sense? All right, so give yourself room. So I'm going to move my x-axis, or my f of x-axis forward just a little bit here to give myself a little bit more room to make that backward shift. Now, technically, I know it's only two boxes I have to be able to shift, but, you know. All right, so I've got you know, my pi over 2, my pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And since I am shifting backward at negative 3 boxes, I'm going to put negative pi over 2. And I'm going to go back two boxes and lightly draw an f of x prime axis. All right, there's no other changes, so I get to go with all my usual key points class. But we're going to start here at zero. How many boxes to the next key point? How many boxes between key points? Three, three boxes, right? So we go over three boxes, and I'm up at one. Three more boxes to zero. Three more to negative one, and three more to zero. Notice I'm going to end two boxes early. Everything is two boxes before it normally happens, because it's all just shifted over. I can even do the point fives and point nines if I wanted to. And again, it's my normal sine curve, like we've always seen, just shifted backward two boxes, or pi over three. Questions on horizontal shift or horizontal translation. All right, maybe switch to a different color of ink or a different pencil or something. And um, let's go with another one here. Let's graph f of x equals the cosine of x minus pi over 2. Again, the only thing that's going to change on this entire function is that we're going to shift forward pi over 2, horizontally forward pi over 2. The nice thing is pi over 2 is right there, correct? So shifting forward pi over 2 is as easy as just putting the f of x prime axis. Now you realize we are going to take pi over 2 longer to finish too, right? So yeah, maybe go out and label 5 pi over 2 to give myself a little bit more room. But I'm using my same key points class. There we go. Alright, so we start at where our new axis is at 1, go how many boxes? Three, three to the 0, then three, 3, then down to 1, then 3 back to 0, and then 3 more, and I just had enough room on my graph grid. And we see 
see our standard cosine curve just shifted forward 90 degrees. Again, if you wanted to, you could even backtrack it a little bit. Go back to zero. And by the way, if you did, now what does it look like? The sine curve. Notice it's 90 degrees off of the sine curve. It's cosine, complementary sine, 90 degrees away. All right, questions on that. All right, look at page 88 now. Let's go look at page 88 now in your textbooks. And let's take a look at numbers 1 through 12, and let's see what the horizontal translation is going to be. Uh, number one, what are we going to do, class? Forward pi. Forward pi. What about number two? Forward pi over two. Forward pi over two. Now look at number three. I want you to notice that the b is whatever coefficient is in front of the quantity. And I want you to notice it's a plain old x. You have to have a plain old x. So as we look at number three, we've got y is equal to two, that's the amplitude, cosine, and it says three x plus pi over four. You can't have a 3 in front of the x, so we have to factor out the 3. So we will end up with y, or f of x, equals 2 times the cosine of 3 times x plus, now remember, factoring is division. You remember me saying that over and over, factoring is division. So when I factor out a 3, I'm dividing the 3 out of the 3x, and I'm dividing a 3 out of the x4, or pi fourths. But we never really divide fractions. So what I'm really going to have to do is multiply by one-third. So my pi over 4 becomes pi over 12. So here I've got an amplitude of 3, a period of 2 pi over 3, and a horizontal shift of backward pi over 12. Does that make sense? Which pi over 6 is one box. Pi over 12 would be half of a box. <laughs> so literally, we'd be shifting back right here, okay? Uh, which is just really obnoxious, but whatever. You get the idea? All right, so then look at number four. What am I going to have to do before I can figure the horizontal translation? I'm going to have to pull out the two, divide out a two to get a plain old x, and then when I quote divide by two, multiply by a half, what does my angle become? Uh, pi over 12 again, but this time minus pi over 12, so we shift forward, pi over 12, half a box. Make sense? Uh, number five, what's the horizontal shift class? Nothing, right? No horizontal shift. Number six, what am I going to have to pull out? A one-third. And if you pull a one-third out of a one-third x, you get x. And if you pull a one-third out of a pi-thirds, you get pi. Yeah. Or multiply by the reciprocal 3, cancel, and get just plain old pi. So what's the horizontal shift on 6? Backward pi. Backward pi. You follow? Mm -hmm. That's why I say this one's a little bit more challenging because you may have to do some factoring in there. All right, so at your seats, I want you to do 7 through 12. At your seats, figure the horizontal shift on 7 through 12. And this is a little less look at it, see it, you're done. It's a little bit more mathy, which, you know, we hate math. We like easy. But we have to do it anyway. And it's better than doing English. Right, Chris? <laughs> he agreed with me. <laughs> I get an email tonight from Chris's mom. Chris wanted me to tell you he agrees with you. About what? <laughs> I got one of those emails the other day from a, a mobile parent, and it's like, uh, so-and-so wanted me to tell you he did the last two problems on the lesson. And I went back, and I'm like, what two problems on the lesson? I'm really confused. I don't know. The hard part is when they're like, you know, a week behind, and they're sending me instant, I'm like, I don't even remember, what, what lesson are you on again? What lesson number was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember now. <laughs> Keeps my life interesting. You wouldn't want me to get bored or anything, you know.
All right, number seven, Quentin, what did you factor out? So what did your horizontal shift end up being? Ooh, when you pull out a 1, 6, when you divide a 1, 6, back 12 pi. Back 12 pi. Can you even imagine graphing that one? Backward 12 pi. <laughs> That's just crazy. Uh, number 8, um, Jamie. Um, I didn't know what to do because it's something to pull out. Ah, well, so in other words then... There is no, no horizontal shift. There's nothing being added or subtracted. Now, you do have a period of 8 pi, 2 pi over a fourth, I would say 8 pi, but there is no horizontal shift. Uh, so, not letting you off the hook that easily, Jamie. Number 9, what's the horizontal shift? Mm -hmm. I took out the 5, which left x plus pi over 20. Pi over 20, so we're going to shift. Um, backward pi over 20. Backward pi over 20 is correct, which. I mean, pi over 6 is a box. That's like smaller than a third of a box. That's just annoying. Aren't you glad we don't have to actually graph these? Uh, number 10. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Ethan. <laughs> Forward pi over 6. Forward pi over 6, which is one nice, easy box. That was an easy problem. That's insulting to Ethan. Ethan likes hard problems. So number 11, Ethan, what's the shift? Uh, Forward two pi over three. Good. When you divide out a three halves, you're multiplying by two thirds on the pi, so you get negative two pi over three forward two pi over three. And then number twelve class. Pi over two. Backward. Backward. Pi over two. All right. We feel like we understand how to work with those. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we need to put it all together. All right. Here we go. Oh, mm -hmm. All of it. Like every single. So here we go. F of x is negative one. one plus 2 times the cosine of x minus pi over 3. Let's see. Always start with your... Cosine, so uh, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. All right. After that, I always look for amplitude and inversion. Any inversion? No. No. What about amplitude? Yes. What do we have? 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 0. You all with me? Quentin's the only one answering out loud. I just want to make sure we, we understand, too. All right, now, there's a couple other changes, though. What else do we have to change, class? Uh, what? Vertical shift. Okay. So, negative one. So, um, down, four. down one. There we go. Down one. All right. Uh, what else? So, forward, part three. Which is what? How many boxes? Two, two. two boxes. All right, so let's do this together now. Oh, no. Set up a new graph grid. We're not shifting very far either direction, so I don't know that I need to mess with my graph too, too much. You may not need to mess with yours at all, again, since you've got so much space on your graph paper. But I'm shifting forward a little bit, so I'm not going to give myself really much of a negative region at all. And since we are shifting down, I'll give myself a little bit more room up. things first. Let's draw our, pri our prime axes. So we're going to draw an x prime axis at the negative 1. And we're going to shift forward pi over 3, which is two boxes. So I'm going to draw an f of x prime axis as well. So this is my new origin right here. Does that make sense? So this is my zero. If I were starting at zero, that's where I would start. But technically, I'm starting at relative to this point, right? So I'm going to start at one, two, relative to this. Then three boxes later, three boxes later, one, two down. Three boxes later, zero. Then one, two, three boxes after that. We wanted to put in what used to be our halves. And we want to put in our square root of 3 over 2's. We could do that. And 
and there we go. It's shifted forward, it's shifted downward, it's stretched to an amplitude of two. Three changes on that graph. Questions. Did we get it? Do you feel like you got it? Again, the shifts are not bad because when you draw your new prime axes, you just do what you've always been doing. You just have to do it off a new starting point, in a sense. Let's take a look at this one. f of x equals 2 minus 1 and a half sine of 2x minus pi over 2. Thoughts? Yeah, we start here. There's something wrong. The x is not by itself. Let's take out a 2. All right, so f of x equals 2 minus 1.5 sine of 2 times the quantity. X minus 2 pi. We're dividing by 2, pi over 4. Multiply by half, that becomes a pi over 4. All right, so we can see that we're going to shift. Well, careful, pi over 4 is 45 degrees. That's one and a half boxes. Ick. So we're going to shift forward one and a half boxes. All right, what else? Uh, we're going to shift up two, which is four boxes, if you wanted to write that down, right? What else? Reference Our reference points. Okay, normally I would start there anyway, wouldn't I? I kind of got sidetracked. Right, normally 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, but we're multiplying everything by negative 1.5 because it's getting flipped and stretched just a little bit. One more important change. What's the period going to be? 2 pi over 2, which is... So the whole thing is going to finish by the time we get to pi. We're going to probably need a new graph grid. Now, shifting up two units, that's pretty significant for this little graph grid that my chalkboard can do. So since I'm shifting up two, I'm going to set my axis rather low to give myself room to make that shift. Start with your shifts. Up to x prime axis. Forward a box and a half. F of x prime axis. That box and a half is going to be a little weird, isn't it? We're going to have to be careful with this. And the whole thing is going to be done by the time I get to pi. Which is how far, class? Pi is normally how many boxes? Six. Six boxes. So from here, watch how I count. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where I've got to be done. That's going to be at zero. Start at zero. Then one, two, three is going to be a zero as well. That takes care of these three zeros. So far, so good? Now. The only points I haven't grabbed. So I've taken care of the period. I've taken care of the shift and the shift. All that's left are those one and a halves and the negative one and a half and one and a half. Remember, one is two boxes, so one and a half is three. So I'm going to come halfway between 
That's going to be right here, isn't it? On the one, I'm going to go down three boxes total, and then halfway in between here, up three boxes total. And rather than figuring any other points, I'm just going to try to plot with as smooth and continuous a curve as I can. And there is my graph. Shifted, shifted, squished, stretched, and flipped. All at once. Questions on this? <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> Given the choice between this and death, really, it's not death worthy. All right, now the homework might be homework for this evening. <laughs> this is just getting like eight of these. Now, the, on the homework, you're going to have four problems. Each one's going to have only two changes in it at most. So they're not going to have all four or five things happening at once. Homework is to do page 84, numbers 31 and 35, and page 89, numbers 25 and 28. No more than two to a grid. You may want to do a separate grid for each, depending on the shifts that they have in them. Don't forget your exam is coming up in Lesson 44. That is on Tuesday, and uh, this is the last material for that exam. So no new material. We're reviewing tomorrow and reviewing Monday in preparation for Tuesday's exam. And you are dismissed. Have a wonderful rest of your day.